I love being black. I do. I love the diversity of us. I love the our swag. I love our tenaciousness, our courage, our bravery. I love that we stand for what we believe. And one of the challenges of loving being black is that inside of black culture, there are, how can I say, groups that aren't always included, specifically when it comes to identity. Now, some people will say sexuality. I say identity because I don't think a person can choose their sexuality. I think a person has a way of seeing themselves in the world and where they feel comfortable. And because it's Pride Month and it's Juneteenth, I am celebrating both at the same time. Hi, I'm Dr. Venus, your hot mess millionaire. And today I wanna, I wanna talk about black pride, okay? And I'm, I'm purposely combining Juneteenth with um, Pride Month for the, I have to say queer, for the queer community. Um, the trans, the bi, the lesbian, the gay, the, the polyamorous, the kink community, all the, all the communities that are marginalized within black culture, okay? And so what I wanna do today is I wanna celebrate black queer activists who have fought for the freedom of black people just as hard as Harriet Tubman has and Dr. King, all right? And let me tell you why. The thing that I have been being with is I really do my startup when I, as, as I create my tech company, right? Is I have a real commitment to inclusion. I do, I have a commitment to inclusion and diversity, okay? And I mean that in every possible way. And the, <laughs> it's fascinating to me that black people as a collective, I'm not saying everybody, but I'm just talking about as a collective, that we have a commitment to freedom. We really do. I mean, if you just look at all of the marches that went down for Brianna, that went down for George, when it went down for Aubrey, you can tell that we have a commitment to freedom, okay? However, there's a caveat. We have a commitment to freedom that's familiar. And it, has, it doesn't have us be self-reflective in terms of how we relate to each other as black people. You see what I'm saying? So I want to, I'm going to do two things today. I want to celebrate seven amazing queer black freedom fighters. And I want to make sure I highlight them and I put together amazing resources. So if you're not familiar with them, read up on them. You can't say you're about liberation if you're going to leave out a group of black people. That don't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? If you're about black people being free and having justice, then that includes all of us, not just some of us, okay? And I'm also, I want to have a conversation with you about inclusion within the community, okay? Oh, and, and please share, please, please share, please share this broadcast, please post, please, please comment, please tag. It's important that we have the conversations. Look, how can I say this, God? Help me say it. Black people are complicated. I would venture to say human beings are complicated. I would venture to say that, okay? And we all have our own different views, principles, ideologies, identities, and values. I love being American as a patriotic American who has served our country, woot, 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 woot. I love being American because this is the only country in the world where I can talk smack and not get dead as a woman, as a queer identified black woman. Otherwise, I would have been lynched or stoned in any other country, okay? And so, the challenge that we have, in my opinion, as black people committed to liberation and pride is that we have to liberate ourselves. We have to liberate ourselves from the conditioning of what's good, what's bad, who's right, who's wrong. We have to actually be the change we want to see in the world versus pointing our finger at white people saying they did it to me. And you're not wrong about that shit, just for the record. Okay. But you, if you're pointing the finger, there's three, there's three fingers pointing back at you. And you have to start looking at, okay, who am I suppressing? Who am I oppressing? Who am I ignoring? Who am I not letting be human because I don't agree with them or I don't live like they live, okay? And I'm addressing it because it matters to me that we actually walk our talk and we love each other. Now, I'm gonna tell you like this and I'll say it to everybody. You can love somebody and not agree with them. 
I know that sounds crazy to hear in this day and age, but you really can love somebody and not agree with them. When I was younger on the streets, all right, a lot of bad things happened. Okay, a lot of a lot of violence, a lot of violation, a lot of bad stuff. And a lot of the bad stuff came from people that I loved, people who were supposed to protect me. Okay, now as a young black girl on the streets, there was no protection. All right, there's none. That's not, that's, it's the streets, right? And the thing that I had to contend with was this. One was everybody who was on the streets were all in survival, okay? So I come from a condition of survival, right? But even more so, I had to contend with that people who love you can hurt you. That doesn't mean they don't love you. That love may not be ideal. It may be wounded love. It may be torrid love, but that doesn't equal they don't love you. And so a lot of times, at least I have in my experience, is I've thrown out the baby with the bathwater. I'm like, if you hurt me or you don't agree with me, then I have to cut you off, okay? As I've matured, as I've emotionally matured and spiritually evolved, I have learned that everybody fails, everybody sins, and everybody doesn't do good. Every human being does something. Sin is sin is sin is sin, if we want to take it to faith-based perspective, right? And, you know, you can hate the sin and love the sinner, if we're going to, again, faith-based perspective. My point is, when it comes to queer identity, when it comes to the LGBTQ community, Black people, we have mar marginalized our brothers and sisters. I'm not, and I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. I think it's just a, I think it's just a mimicry of what has been done to us. <laughs> okay, I think it's just white oppression being acted out in black environments. Okay, and I say that when we can't allow people to be who they are, we lose. It's it's so funny. I don't, I'm not talking about this today, but I will get into it in another talk. I will get into like black men who beat black women, but love white women and they don't beat their white, white women. And I'm not saying that as a judgment, I'm saying it as a, as, as, as a different kind of oppression within the black community. Or that if we want to go all the way in, I'm having a, a preacher who has an affair, but the first lady can't leave him. He broke the he broke the covenant, but because he's a man, he's we'll forgive the pastor, but we don't. <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll side with him, but we won't back her for not wanting to be in a relationship in a marriage with a man who has broken his vow to her. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm saying inside of our own culture, there are divisions that we don't address, and if we actually address them, I mean, really address them and actually heal them we could actually have so much more power when it comes to social change because we would be united. It's hard to win when you're not united. And if you're in fighting, you can't unite. And you can't, and here's the thing, everybody, I promise you, you can find something you don't like about everybody, which is why you need to find out what are you aligning about. I'm aligned with anything that serves what I'm committed to. I'm aligned with you winning. I may not agree with what you say, but that I'm committed that you win, girl. I want you to have your paper. I want you to have your freedom. I want you to be filthy, dirty, rich because you can. So you can fund whatever you want to fund. If you want to fund a, 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 a hospital, you should be able to write that check. You should be able to do that as a black woman. You should be, but you got to get taught how to do that. But if you are offended that I'm queer and I know how to make money, you don't. You are shooting yourself in the foot. It's does it, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing a disservice to your, to your children and future generations because you don't like the package. Look, I, I, I'm convinced that all the people who made a difference in the Bible were a hot mess. Hot mess from David all the way to Saul turn Paul. All of them were just hot messes, okay? And yet we can have more grace for the biblical people than we do for the people in our families. You see what I'm saying? And so what, if we could actually just take the case that human beings are imperfect and people do the best they can with what they, what they know and what they have, and we can get, grant grace for people to be human, we could actually move so much more, so much faster, generationally faster than we are now because we don't have grace. We don't have grace and mercy, we, we just judge. And I'm not saying, here's the thing. 
I don't think as a human being, we cannot judge. I think that that comes with the package as being a human being. The point of it is, you, I, judging is not in itself a problem. It's only a problem when you make it a problem for the person you're judging. <laughs> as if they're supposed to do something about it. You know what I mean? So if you see um, a black queer woman who dresses, who presents in a masculine form, that doesn't equal she's not brilliant and she can't love you. That she can't give you something you can't get anywhere else. Or if you see a white, a white man, this is real talk, who can actually open doors for you? Do you not walk through the door because he's white? I mean, and let's make it white and gay. How about them apples? So you see what I'm saying? So if, we, if we're really committed to winning, we have to mature emotionally to allow for people who don't act and, and perform that we do. And I'm not saying you have to agree with me. In fact, I don't think you should. I think you should agree with you. I don't think you should agree with people. I think you should agree with you, okay? <laughs> and I think firmly, if a person has something that could actually make your life easier, better, who knows something you don't know, and is willing to teach you, to show you, to open doors for you, I think it's self-sabotage and an act of self-hate to turn it down. I really do. Okay. And now we can go all the way up into like right, wrong, good, and bad. But in the end, we're all going to die and we all need help. And if you turn down the help because you don't like the package, then you are going to end up handicapping those people who depend on you, especially when it comes to money, especially when it comes to social change. Because in order to have both of those, you require other people who are different from you in order to get that change done. And a lot of times in the black community, we stop winning because we don't agree or approve. And because we don't agree or approve, we will sacrifice our money, our building, our freedom, and our rights. For what? For a point of view. I'm not doing it. It's not necessary. I'm going to keep training up black women to be millionaires and billionaires until God tells me not to. And I'm going to keep being inclusive of all kinds of black women all kinds of blacks. You see what I'm saying? And there's some poor whites and some white women who identify as black. They welcome here too. No one's left out in my economy. Okay. They're not. You just have to respect the game and you have to be okay with that. If you are really committed to making money, money is green. It doesn't care. <laughs> it doesn't care. <laughs> it doesn't care who, where it comes from. Okay. And until you have the ability to let a person be who they are and let yourself be who you are, you're not going to be able to reach the world. You won't. When I used to be really mad at black women because black women had hurt me and the main one was my mother. And it took me 15 years to forgive my mom. And it took me another five to walk in her shoes to really see her as a person instead of a parent. And when I actually took on having grace and mercy with her, my relationship with myself transformed and with all black women. I didn't even know I was holding myself back by judging her based on her actions and not accounting for that she was wounded and they had acted out all kinds of violence on her body. Of course, she's going to act it out on mine. You see what I'm saying? So I'm this, I'm one, the reason I'm saying all that is because if we're dealing with black pride, I want us to be proud, not just of our progress, but of our ability to actually make room for us to be individuals. Okay. I'm going to do another broadcast, not today. I'll do it probably next week. I'm going to do a broadcast around, um, around Christianity and queer identity, because I don't think we talk about it. We have open secrets. We have pastors and we have choir directors who are gay, but we, we say they're not, we ignore it. Right. And I don't, none of that's inherently bad. Don't, don't, don't trip off that. What I'm pointing to is when you ignore something, you disappear it. And could you imagine what it's like if someone ignored you and disappeared you? by not acknowledging you, okay? So it's something I'm inviting us to think through as a people. We're in the 21st century. We were born in a historical moment where we can transform the trajectory of our bloodline for the next five generations because of technology, because of social change, because of all the protesting, okay? We really could, but we won't be able to do it if we do the infighting thing, okay? So I'm saying if you're on my platform, I'm taking for granted that you're open-minded. 
okay? And that you're committed to a world that works for everyone. That's what I'm taking. If you're listening to my word, I'm taking for granted that you're committed to things working, not to your point of view, okay? And if and if, if some people aren't, that well, perfectly, your mind will get changed. And if not, not a problem. If you say something ugly, then we'll just, you know, ignore you because we're not going to feed your, we're not going to feed your addiction to hate. We're not doing hate. We're not doing Asian hate. We're not doing gay hate. We're not doing black hate. Not on my watch. Not on my platforms. We're not doing it. Ever. Okay? So you need to know where I stand in the matter. I stand proud of being black. I stand proud in all of my street, Stanford, rich, queer, opinionated, arrogant, a little, anno a little annoying from time to time. I stand all of that. I, I embrace all of that. And I'm gonna encourage you to embrace yours too, okay? And make room, make room for people to be themselves. You may learn something, you may get access to something you can't get from the people that look and act like you all the time, okay? I'm gonna tell you, some people who've opened doors for me, a lot of them weren't black. And I'm not, there's no shame in that. A lot of them were white. And that's why I have allies. And I won't ever walk away from them, I won't ever betray them. Because I know that without white people, I would not win in this world, and neither would you. And until we actually contend with, we as a people, we have our own divisions within our own race, then we don't have our unified power, okay? I've said my piece about that, all right? So now I wanna introduce you to, or reintroduce you to, seven, seven, um, what I call freedom fighters, okay? The seven black LGBTQ leaders in honor of Juneteenth and Pride Month, okay? And so, and this is, I have this article, it's in the notes if you want to read along, okay? And I'm, 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 maybe I should say something about Juneteenth. Juneteenth is, um, in my opinion, it's like the, it's like the, it's black, it's black people's 4th of July. It's our Independence Day, okay? It is when slavery ended for real, for real. The last holdout was Texas, of course, okay? And we celebrate it because it was when we were emancipated, all right? And if you think about emancipation, if you think about freedom, um, if you think about slavery, when we were in that particular yoke, whether you were a Jew or Gentile, black, gen white, whatever, there were some white slaves too, by, by the way. But um, the pain was so big, we didn't make the same divisions. You see what I'm saying? I have theories about what happened afterward, but that's not the point. What I want you to hear right now is, that we as a people, we have a day that we celebrate our freedom, okay? And there are people who fought for that freedom that we don't always acknowledge because they're queer, okay? Or lesbian, gay, bi, trans, questioning, asexual, whatever version you wanna pick. pick literally, pick your flavor, all right? And so I wanna highlight seven, seven LBGTQ black advocates who face no pressure from both the black community and white community live by the idea that we aren't truly free until all of us are. So my fa one of my favorites, drum roll please, Audrey Lloyd. This is a, this is a bad sister, okay? If y'all wanna read some stuff that will blow your brain apart, read Audrey Lloyd, okay? Just, just read, read, read Zombie. Just go read her, look for her quotes. Okay, because she was a chick who fought for us. With she fought for us in terms of black women. She fought for us in terms of feminism. She fought, fought in terms of for us for civil rights. Okay, she died in 1992, so she was right in that cut of the civil rights movement and the women's movement. And she, her voice is amazing. She can her writing. I wish I could write like her. I wish I could say what she says. She is profound. Check her out if you want to be inspired by being a black woman. Okay? So that's one. Next one up is always the fabulous James Baldwin. Girl, I Am Not Your Negro is a movie. You should look at it. Because he is breaking down racism in a way that has you get real clear about how it works and what you can do about it. He's everything. And he he's... um. Uh, he's an essayist, he's a writer, he's an activist, and he, <laughs> he was, um, he was, he stood at Dr. King's side when Dr. King did his 1963 speech, I Have a Dream. James Baldwin was right beside him. We don't hear about that part. I didn't hear about that part. 
James Baldwin was standing right beside Dr. King when he had that, when he said that. And um, I, I'm proud of that. I'm very proud. You know, um, there's a quote here that says, to be a Negro in this country and to be re relatively conscious is to be enraged almost all the time. That is James Baldwin, okay? Um, there's Marsha P. Johnson, okay? And she's a pillar, or she was a pillar of the LBG community in New York City. And she was a transgender woman and she fought for queer rights. She was an activist and she fought against discrimination um, and while she was struggling with mental illness and also homelessness, okay? Um, I can't get into it all the way deep today because I want to, I just want to, I want to make sure I get, the, I want to highlight these freedom fighters. But Pose is a TV show. It's in its fourth and final season. And they do a lot of beautiful work. One is fun because they're talking about they're talking about Vogue and they're talking about the houses and dancing and it's just that's that's the fun part. But in terms of the social commentary, they talk about um, um, being um, identity politics, another level, but also addiction, addiction, mental illness, and um, being ostracized because you you're not accepted for who you are. They they did that. I would encourage you to really check out Pose. It's a beautiful, how can I say this, God? A beautiful window into a world that normally has the doors shut because we couldn't get hurt, okay? It's primarily black, black and brown men in the ballroom um, culture of the 80s through the 90s, okay? Um, but it's a beautiful, it talks about family. It, ta it does a lot of stuff that if you have mental illness in your family, if you have addiction in your family, you may want to check it out. It'll give you some tools. Okay. Now here is like, here's my, like, okay, my spirit animal, his name is Bernard Rustin. Okay. He was the strategic, um, advisor for Dr. King. Um, and he was the one who helped organize the March on Washington in 1963. Okay, he was behind the scenes doing all of the strategic work to get that thing to work. Do you know how many people came from all over the world to do that? He was the orchestrator of all those people getting there, getting in line, doing all that stuff. It was him. It was it was it was uh, it was Mr. Rustin. Okay, and I he was he was civil rights activist and queer rights pioneer who advocated for those people who existed in the intersection of both identities. I may need to say this because it's important. Oh, yes, you can share. Please share. Please post. Please tag. Yes, yes, yes. Identity is not sexuality. I know a lot of people don't have that distinction. You know, like white people don't have distinctions that we have in, in terms of black community and how we do language, right? So if I said red bone or high yellow, black people would know what that means. Unless uh, white people would not know what that means because they don't know what we they don't understand the vernacular, they don't understand the terms, right? Or if I if 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 a black man says that's my nigga. N I G G A, what a white person would have heard in the 90s or even the 80s is an insult, like, oh, you're calling him a nigger. That's not the same. But they, can, they don't have those nuances. And the same thing happens in queer culture, in gay culture, in lesbian culture, in trans culture. Okay? Each culture has a language. And I, I want you to know, I stumble a lot. I stumble a lot with trans culture because they their pronouns are not the same ones that I use. I tend to talk in queer culture language code. But if you're a straight person, you'll miss most of my jokes. <laughs> Not all of them, but I, speak, I traffic in that language, that lexicon. So it's an identity. Identity is not the same as sexuality. And a lot of times people conflate the two. You, if you identify as a mom, okay, no one can convince you otherwise. That's really true for you. Or a dad, that's an identity. That is not a sexuality. That is an identity. And you will fight for that. So let somebody mess with your child. You going you gonna wake up bloody, black out, wake up bloody. All right. So I can't get into it today. And if I need to, I'll break down identity more. Okay. But it's important to note that if you don't take the time to get an understanding about how people see themselves, you will never be effective in business. You won't make your money. You can't because you don't know who you're marketing to. You won't, you, you can't, and I'm going to tell you, marketing has everything to do with relational dynamics, really understanding who you're talking to. Okay. So if you're committed to making money, you're going to have to get interested in other people and understanding how they see themselves, not how you see them and not what you approve of. That's not going to make your money. That's going to block your money. That's going to block your paper. Okay. That's going to block your billions. It doesn't have to, but it could. So I'm telling you to your face, 
You, if you really want to be effective in business, you've got to get an understanding of how people see themselves, not how the, not how you see them and not what popular culture says, because they're wrong, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, it's just so, every stereotype, yes, has a grain of truth, but it's a stereotype because it's inflated. You know, not every gay man is a flaming queen, okay? That, and, I, and I love me some queens, but I'm just saying like, it doesn't have to look that way, right? So keep that in mind. Um, here's a quote from um, Mr. Rustin. When an individual is protesting society's refusal to acknowledge his dignity as a human being, his very act of protest confers dignity on him. I'm here for it. Now, here's one of my favorite theorists. Her name is Barbara Christian. I'm sorry, Barbara Smith. And um, she's an author and she's considered the mother of black feminism. Okay. And she was a social, she was, um, she did social activism, activism as participant in 1960s protests and marches for civil rights. Um, she later used her writing to deconstruct both homophobia within the black community and anti-blackness and feminist movement. This is important. I had a fight with feminism. I've been fighting with feminism for, since 1994, right? Because they had no, they, it was racist. There was no room for me. And um, just because we both have vaginas doesn't mean we have the same experience. And it's one of the reasons why I don't talk about other races when I'm talking about blackness, because I don't know the experience and I don't want to misrepresent. I can't really speak to other, other, other women, other women who've been historically marginalized their experience. So I don't want to speak out of turn. So I don't. <laughs> okay. So, but I love the way she writes because she's addressing that and she's actually addressing homophobia within the black community and then also really dealing with racism and feminism. And she did it brilliantly. Okay. And then we have, we'll wrap up with Andrea Jenkins. Okay. Um, this is a new addition to the annals of black LBGTQ activists. This trailblazing politician made her mark on history when she became America's first openly transgendered black woman elected to political office. Okay. And this was in 2000, 2017. So this is important. Oh, I'm sorry. I got, I got some more. I'm sorry. I got one more after this one. Um, this is important because trans rights are human rights and the same way black men would get lynched for uh, being accused of raping a white woman trans women get murdered by black men more than any other group okay and it's important to know that it's still a black woman getting dead y'all be clear it's still an aggression and a rage being acted out on black women's bodies Okay. And whether you present as like, if you present as masculine or feminine, it's not okay that someone could take your life because they don't agree. Okay. So this, so it's important. I, should, I say important, but it's significant. I maybe significant is a better word. It's important to me, but it's significant to note that we have a violence within the black community against each other that we don't talk about. And I'm not in this, I'm not even, it's not a judgment, but I'm saying if we're really committed to winning, we actually have to have the conversations, y'all. We got to actually talk it through and get an understanding. Or if we're not going to talk about it, allow for it and don't, don't punish somebody for it. Don't punish somebody because they don't believe like you believe or they don't live like you live. I had somebody post something about me the other day. It was, it was kind of interesting. They were saying, you can't talk about God and gay in the same sentence. I'm like, who says? Who says? It was a woman, God bless us, and she was saying some version of, you know, your lifestyle is your choice. And I'm like, how could you say that to me when you don't know me? How is that even possible to say? Right? And it's, it's, it's almost laughable in my world because if sexuality or identity is a choice, that means you chose to be straight. So that means you can unchoose straight. And I would love for you to see you do that. I would love to see you do that. How can you unchoose straight if it if it's a choice right so there's a lot of misconceptions around identity sexuality sexual practices sexual preferences that have been taboo and I, to be fair america was founded on puritanism so we got it honest okay but we have space now to have conversation dignified conversations to get an understanding if we're open to them if we're open to them if we're willing to hear another person's truth and let it be their truth, not the truth. Your truth is a truth, not the truth. My truth is a truth, not the truth. You see what I'm saying? And that's important to note because we can have multiple truths. They can coexist in the same space in time. 
and not invalidate any one of them. Okay, we, it really can be done. And if, if we do it now, but I want us to do it intentionally. But how about this? I'm doing it intentionally. Y'all can do what you want to do. And that's one of the reasons why I'm building my platform because I want to make room for every type of black woman to have a voice. And once I get that one built, I'm going to build one for another group of people. I'm going to, build, I'm going to be building, I'm putting culture in the cloud, y'all. You, you'll watch, you'll see, okay? But it will be a space where it's inclusive and it's a space, it's a safe space to be, to be yourself. And that's, and that's the thing that we don't have. We don't have a space where we can gather and be safe without the penalty of, of respectability, without the penalty of respectability politics. And some of us aren't respectable. I am not respectable, okay? <laughs> I'm not respectable, I'm honest, okay? And there's a whole different value system, okay? So I stand inside of, sis, whether you're queer or straight or bi or asexual or trans or binary or kink or, or whichever flavor, I want you to know, I love you. I love everything about you, girl. I love everything about you. I love your swag. I love your attitude. I love your opinion. I love your temper. I love your genius, your perseverance. I love your tenacity, your ingenuity. I love your tears. I love your laughter. I love everything about you. I just love you. I love you, black woman. And there's nothing you can do about that. I love you. 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 How about them apples? Okay. I love you. I approve of you. I accept you. I appreciate you. Just because you are who you are. And as far as I'm concerned, God is love. So I declare and I decree that God loves you too. And, and, and anybody else who has their, their perspectives and their positions and their opinions and their laws and their rules, they can have them. Don't take them on as yours. Don't defend yourself against haters. Don't argue with their truth. They can have their truth. You don't have to dance with it, okay? Be proud of yourself. They don't know your walk. They, they haven't walked in your shoes. They have no idea what it took to be you and to survive and to be alive and be well for some of us, okay? So please, please, I know not everybody can be out. You see what I'm saying? Because of money, because of all the things that you have to go through. I understand that. And I'm not suggesting, and not everybody needs to be out. Not everybody wants to write any business. I understand that shit too. Okay. I'm just saying whether you, whatever way you walk, be proud. You are a masterpiece. You are God wrapped in flesh. You are the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the head and not the tail. You are perfect. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And that can never be wrong. It's impossible. It's, it's an impossibility. Okay? So my prayer for you, my prayer for you, is that you embrace you and that you don't punish you for anything you think you shouldn't be. That you give yourself grace. I don't think you can give grace to other people until you give it to yourself. At least I couldn't. I had to give myself grace before I can give it to anybody else. Okay? And be proud. There's a lot of there's a lot of queer black people that have changed the world. And you should look them up if you haven't already. It'll help you not feel alone. At least it has it helps me not feel alone. You know? Okay? So please know that and remember that. Okay? So that's all I got for today. Please, if you were fed by this word, this life giving word, this life affirming word, please pay it forward. All right. I got some stuff coming down the pike. Make sure if you want to join the, if you want to learn how to network like a millionaire, go to the hot mess millionaire Facebook group. I included the link here. If you, um, want to get information about my tech startup, cause it's coming and it's cooking with hot grease, girl. It is cooking with hot grease. Um, make sure you sign up so you can be kept up in the loop of where we're going and what we're doing. It is amazing. I am so excited about what we're about to do. It is going to be glorious. I don't even want to, if I start talking about, I'm going to start doing a hallelujah dance around my own home. All right. But it's glorious. And I cannot wait to share it with you. It is going to be so good. So good. So good. Did I mention good yet? So good. All right. Um, and I think that's all I have for now. Um, again, if you were fed by this word, please share it. Please share. 
this, this message is just as important as black wealth. It's a different kind of wealth, okay? And it's important in my worldview that we, that we love each other. I know I keep saying important because I can't think of another word to say. <laughs> and so that's all for now. Know that you love your on all measure, my sweet sister and success and the brothers who love us and our allies. And please remember this, you're worth so much more than you have ever, ever been taught to believe. This is Dr. Venus, your hot mess millionaire. Goodbye for now.